Hello, we're going to look at the final section or the final thing that you need to do with your uh, graph uh, to make sure that it satisfies the new expectations of the 2016 syllabus. Now, if you remember, this is a context. We have basically an object that we're dropping through different heights and we're measuring the time that it takes to fall down that particular height. So we're varying the height and seeing how it affects the time, like this. So we're basically, the independent variable is the height and the time taken for the object to fall, the cat to fall, will be measured three times and then we will find an average. But this is a context. Now, what we did so far um, is this. And this was the expectation pre-2016. We have the uncertainty, variable error bars for every point, and we basically um, decide the maximum minimum lines of best fit by looking at the first and the last points. That will decide the maximum minimum lines of best fit. But there's always been a problem with these. And the problem is that, is that the uncertainty of the last point here the last uh, value, the uncertainty of the last values, ignores the fact that the other points are actually quite precise. It's not really representative of the precision of these values. Now in 2016, the new way of doing it is the max minimum lines of best fit must fit within all these error bars. So this line here must go within this and within this and so on. Not the the, the the first and the last point, but all the error bars. So it has to look a bit like this instead. Notice that it's been reduced to fit within all the error bars. This is what you have to do. But it's not so difficult, and we're going to look at how you can adjust what you have already to this. So now the, the 2016 version, the maximum minimum lines of best fit are within all the error bars. So this is the graph we have, and we're interested mostly in the last point. Maximum line, maximum minimum lines of best fit will depend on the this last error bar here. So we're going to change these so that it actually fits within these error bars. So we're interested in this these two points here. Now, in order for this line to come down a bit further, let's try another value, 0 0.8. Let's try that. That's too much. It's, it's come well within the error bar. Let's try 0 0.9. That's a little bit too high. 0 0.89. That's better. Now we look at the lower line, the, the, the minimum line of best fit, and we need to increase this last value. 0 0.6. That is still too, a bit too high. 0 0.59 see there we have it now these lines fit exactly within all the error bars so we now have two new values for the gradients that fits all the points not just the first and the last error bars so the end looks a little bit like this now we find the new range which is from 0 0.1116 up to 0 0.1856. The range is the, that value minus that value. So this is the range. But we're interested in the half range of these gradients, which is 0 0.074 divided by 2. And that gives us a value of 0 0.037. So our gradient is going to be equal to 0 0.147 which is this to three decimal places, plus or minus 0 0.037 to three decimal places. Notice that I include the units. It's the change in time squared divided by the distance, second square per meter. We don't need two significant figures here. We can have one significant figure if this is a three. So let's uh, change that to one significant figure and therefore to two decimal places. So this will be to two decimal places. So the new gradient, 
to two decimal places will be 0 0.15 plus or minus 0 0.04 seconds squared per meter. Then we change that to a percentage, 0 0.04 divided by 0 0.15 times by 100% gives a final gradient of 0 0.15 seconds squared per meter plus or minus 26%. And then you must use this with the uncertainty to figure out the value for G. I must acknowledge uh, the, um, this website for the falling cat. I must also say thank you to the cat for offering to offer his life for the interests of uh, science. Thank you, cat.